Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how you can use gyroscopes to work out. I have in my hand a gyroscopic exercise ball. Let me show you how this works. So with this specific one here, to start it off, it has a little spring in it that you can get it spinning just by winding it up a little and it spins. Now it's not spinning very fast and if you don't do anything, it'll stop spinning pretty quickly. You can see there's kind of a lot of friction and it stops. But now watch what happens if I get it spinning initially and it's going really slow, but watch what happens if I just wiggle my hand back and forth. So you can see that just by kind of jiggling my hand back and forth, I can get this spinning extremely fast. Really good people can get it to around 10,000 RPMs, which is extremely fast. Now the exercise portion of it comes from the fact that you're turning and twisting the gyroscope. And if you've ever played with a good gyroscope before, you know that it's really hard to turn. It doesn't want to change the direction that it's currently spinning. So you can see before I get this spinning, it's a sharp edge on the bottom. It just always tips over. But now I get it spinning. And I can't get it to tip over. <laughs> now the reason the gyroscope doesn't tip over is because when it's spinning in this direction, it has a lot of angular momentum pointing out towards the camera. And the faster you're spinning it, the higher the angular momentum. And as you know with regular linear momentum, once something has a lot of momentum, it doesn't want to change its direction very easily. So if you try to twist it in any direction, it's going to resist that. For example, let's say you have the gyroscope like this, and I push up on this lever, you expect it just to fall over like that. And when it's not spinning, that's exactly what happens. I push up and it falls over. Or I could have a string on it like this and lift up on the string and it's gonna fall over like that. But that's not what happens when it's spinning. Now I'm gonna lift up on it. So I'm just putting some force on it and it just starts spinning around in a circle instead of tipping over. So if I let go, it stops spinning, but if I put some force on it, it spins in a circle. In fact, I can lift it off the ground and it still doesn't tip over. It just spins in a circle. When a gyroscope spins like that, when you apply a force, it's called precession. So now that we can understand how a gyroscope works, now we can get even more confused how this gyroscopic exercise tool is working. Now when I first got this, it made me extremely confused. Why, when I'm turning it in my hand, does it increase the rate of rotation of the gyroscope? That's not what happens with a regular gyroscope. For example, I can get this one spinning, and if I just move it in my hand like this, it doesn't go faster. In fact, it slows it down a lot faster. So why in this case, when I'm just moving it in my hand like this, is it increasing the speed? And here's another mystery of this tool here. You'll notice that sometimes when it's spinning, you can see that it changes the direction that it's moving in here. So it's completely rotating one direction, and then it went back the other direction, almost instantly. So now it's going clockwise, and then counterclockwise. I found a few papers published on the gyroscopic exercise tool, but nothing that made intuitive sense of why it's actually increasing the rotor speed. For example, here's the explanation you usually get. Now this math makes sense, and I really like math, and it's useful in a lot of cases, but I don't like using math to explain why something works. It doesn't help me understand it. So the math shows that momentum is conserved and it does work, but why is it actually turning and why is it actually speeding up when you pivot your hand like this? So let's try to break it down and figure out why it's actually turning. And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. If you're like most people, you probably felt depressed, stressed, anxious, or even overwhelmed. We all know that the past few years have been really tough on everyone. In order to relieve some of the stress, you can do things like regular exercise or meditate, but one of the best ways to help you overcome these feelings is by speaking with a real licensed professional. With BetterHelp, you can talk to a therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. Also, BetterHelp has a broad range of expertise with a network of over 20,000 therapists that gives you access to help that may not be available in your local area. 
To get started, all you do is just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you can schedule your secure video and phone sessions, plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. And no need to worry, if you don't like your therapist for any reason, you can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. So join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab. And thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the experiment. Let's go ahead and take this apart and see if we can understand how it's working a little bit better. So there are no batteries in this whatsoever. There are lights in it, but the lights are coming from a little magnet in there and once you get it spinning fast enough, it generates a current in the little LEDs and it lights up the LEDs. So the power for the lights is actually coming from you getting the gyroscope spinning fast enough. This is actually pretty easy to just pry open. So inside of it, you can see we have a ring right here. Then we have the main gyroscope here. And this is a pretty heavy weight. So this is the part that actually spins. Now this part is just a coiled spring in here to get the gyroscope started initially. So this isn't the main mechanism. And here's the magnet that lights up the LEDs. So basically all this is is the gyroscope piece here and you can see this shaft coming through it, this little piece, and it sits on the lip of this outer shell here. So the outer shell has a little lip on it that this rests on. Then this ring in this case goes on top of it. So once I put this upper ring on, the shaft of the rotor is in there pretty snugly. And especially once I put on the top, you can see I can turn it, but there's a lot of friction. And if I put on the top, now there's a lot of friction and I can't even twist it. But you can see that once I start it spinning, then it can twist in there. Now this will start to give us some clues to why I can just pivot my hand like this and it speeds up the rotor inside. Listen how fast that's going. Now as I showed earlier, you already know that when I try to push on the gyroscope to pivot it, it makes it spin in a circle. And we can see that same thing here. So the more I try to turn it like this, the more it's going to want to turn like this inside. Now this is the key point to how it's actually increasing the rotor speed. You have it in the case and you change the direction that the angular momentum is to get it to process around in a circle like this. And because you're causing it to process around in a circle, it's rolling against this outer edge. And, and as it turns, it rolls it faster and faster and rolls it around in a circle. And so you can get really high RPMs because of this really tiny radius of the shaft right there. In fact, that's how this gyroscope that I've been using the whole time actually spins up to start with. So this is resting on some ball bearings inside. So the outside case is stationary and this inner ring is the thing that spins. And this rounded portion at the top is spinning along with it as well. So if I just roll this tip on the photo paper here, the rolling will actually be really fast because it's a small radius compared to the distance that we're moving. So if it doesn't slip, it has to have a lot of rotations that happen in order to keep up with the linear distance we're pushing it. And the closer you get to the tip of it, the more rotations it has to do to keep up. So you can see that if I put it near the tip and move it, it goes really fast. In fact, you can get it spinning really fast. Many thousands of RPMs just by rubbing that small radius against the table. So what's happening is it's basically like taking that inner shaft and rolling it against the table to get it spinning. So you have a high gear ratio because of that small radius there and you rub it against the table to get it turning in a circle. So what this means is that it's actually the friction of the shaft that causes the rotor to speed up due to precession. So that means that if you didn't have a lot of friction, it wouldn't work very well. So let's see if that's actually true. I'm gonna reduce the friction of that shaft in there against the outer shell and see if I can get it spinning. Now that spins in there way easier. Let's see if we can actually get it spinning up now. I can't get it spinning. That is crazy. So it's twisting and it's twisting really easy, but now that I took that friction away, 
the outer shell is rolling against the shaft, but the shaft can't get spinning now, it just slips. So by lubricating that inner shell there, I ruined the ball. So we can say pretty definitively that it's that friction that gets the rotor spinning. Now this should be really weird because usually friction doesn't get things spinning fast, it slows them down. But in this specific case, the friction is the thing that gets the rotor spinning. But what about the business of switching directions? Well, because this isn't a perfect fit, only one of the rotors, one side of the rotors is touching the outer case at a time. And depending on which one is touching, it's gonna roll in the clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction. Because this side of the rotor is spinning in this direction, so that's gonna cause it to rotate like this. But this rotor is spinning like this, and that's gonna cause it to rotate like this. So depending on how you tip it in your hand, it's going to rotate one direction or the other direction. But what's cool about it is it doesn't matter which way it's rotating, it will still cause the rotor to speed up. So that means that these things don't take any particular skill to use. Basically, if you just grab one and kind of start shaking your hand, it will increase the speed of the rotor inside. Now you do get better at it the more you play with it, and you can get it <laughs> spinning really fast once you get just a little bit of skill with it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And also check out theactionlab.com. You can see my experiment boxes there, and also some artwork that we have for sale that's really cool that uses Muso Black. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.